Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be doing an unboxing, overview, and first ride on the Engway L20 2.0 foldable electric bike. Now, I'm particularly excited about this bike because it does fold, which means it is ultra portable. You can throw it in the trunk of your car, throw it in your RV, and as soon as you get to your destination, pop the bike out, unfold it, and off you go on to your next adventure. Now, if you've been following my content for a while, you'll know that I created an entire video series on another folding bike, the Electric XP 3.0. So as you can imagine, I was particularly excited when Engway reached out asking if I would be open to reviewing their foldable e-bike. And after looking at the spec sheet, I said, absolutely, send it on over. We'll take a look at the bike, see what it's all about. So so without further delay, let's get this box popped open, see what's inside, we'll get it assembled, we'll get it charged up, and we will take it on its first ride. All right, so as you can see, everything is nicely packaged in some uh, high quality foam. We'll pop this off here, and here we have the bike. So far, looks good. So what, what I'll do is I'll get this pulled out and we'll take a closer look. All right, so there is the Engway L20 2.0 in all of its glory outside of the box. Uh, we've got zip ties galore. We've got foam and cardboard all over the place. Uh, so far, this bike looks in pristine condition. I don't see any damage at all whatsoever. So it appears they've done a fantastic job with the packaging. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna get all these zip ties off and we'll get this bike assembled. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, there were some other things in the box. Uh, we've got what looks to be a hardware kit. So we've got uh, our pedals, we've got a hardware kit, we've got some zip ties, some screws, looks like our charger. We've got, of course, the seat. It's hard to ride a bike without that. And we've got our front rack. All right, so full disclosure, once you think you're done taking off all the zip ties, guess what? There's more. They are all over the place. This is a zip ties galore. Oh, look at that, we've got another one there. And it looks like we've got some more over there. So I'm gonna keep taking these zip ties off and I'll get this thing assembled. I found more zip ties. Now, before we go too crazy with the zip ties, just know that there are some on here that are very important for cable management. These are the ones that are supposed to stay on the bike. They're not part of the packaging, especially this one around here with the motor quick disconnect, which is really nice to see. All right, so I am officially done assembling this bike and the assembly process was actually quite simple. All I had to do was attach the fender assembly and the headlight. Uh, the bike does come with a front rack. Uh, I don't use front rack, so I did not install it. But if you wanted to, it's, it comes with the bolts, everything, you just bolt it down. Once those were on, you can attach the front wheel tighten down the axle bolts. I attached the handlebars uh, to the handlebar stem and I just clamped it down really easy. Uh, the seat post, you just drop it in, clamp it down uh, to the right height that you need. And then of course the uh, pedals, uh, just screw those on, make sure you got left and right in the right position and you're good to go. Assembly was really easy on this bike. In terms of weight, the Engway L20 2.0 weighs in at 68.3 pounds and can support riders up to 264 pounds or 120 kilograms. All right, so now for a quick tour of the bike, you'll see that the front and rear tires are 20 inch by three inch fat tires, so always nice to have. They are puncture resistant. Um, if we look here, this is a hub motor bike and the uh, motor here is 750 nominal watts and 1,100 125 peak watts so plenty of power it is a 52 volt system uh, which is pretty crazy because normally in bikes like these they're 48 volts so we've got some extra oomph to this bike we'll definitely be testing that out in terms of torque this will put out 75 newton meters of torque as you can see here, we've got a Shimano Tourney derailleur with seven gears, which is pretty typical for e-bikes, especially in this price range. We do have a derailleur guard, which is really nice to have because in the event the bike tips over, this will protect that derailleur. 
Now as we work our way up a bit, you'll see that we've got our rack here, which will support loads up to 25 kilograms or 55 pounds. So if you're looking to carry some cargo, uh, you want some pannier bags or a rear bag, you can always mount that onto here. Of course, in the back, uh, we have got our tail light and brake light combo. Here we have our fender assembly, which is pre-installed. That'll help keep a lot of the dirt and debris off of you and the frame and battery of your bike. So always nice to have. Uh, and as we work our way forward, you will see we have a removable battery here. Uh, and this is, like I mentioned, a 52 volt system. So we've got a 52 volt battery, uh, good for 13 amp hours, which is 676 watt hours. So uh, decent sized battery, we'll definitely be putting it to the test and see what kind of range we can get uh, in various pedal assist levels, as well as riding this bike with the throttle only. Uh, of course, there is a charging port here uh, that you have available to you on the other side is our key ignition, all that fun stuff. So when we flip the bike around, I'll show you all that fun stuff. Um, as we work our way up here, uh, we've got a suspension seat post, which is nice because that'll help absorb some of the impact. As you can see, this bike does not have a rear suspension, but it does have this suspension seat post as well as a suspension seat. And to be honest with you, this seat looks very plush. Uh, it is ventilated here. Uh, so we'll be putting that to the test. Generally speaking, I'm never like uh, super excited about stock seats uh, that come with bikes, but this one seems pretty nice. If it's not, I'll definitely be swapping in uh, a Cloud 9 seat, which I absolutely love. Now, in terms of removing this battery, um, you don't have to remove the stem and the seat. There's actually a lever back here, and if you um, turn, you know, hit that lever, this thing will lift up. And now when you unlock the, uh, the locking mechanism for the battery, you can actually pull this right out and swap out batteries or take the battery with you somewhere uh, to get it charged up. So really nice uh, that they thought through this because if this wasn't uh, a tilting seat, you have to remove the seat post every time and that's a pain in the butt. Now, as we work our way down, we've got our pedals. You can pull this lever and these are foldable pedals, so that's really nice. Uh, help make this bike even more compact and easy to store in the trunk of your car or in some bins to help uh, make it easier to transport wherever you wanna put this bike. You just lift it out, it'll lock into place. You're good to go. This, of course, is the locking mechanism for the bike, so uh, you can just uh, you know, push this lever and pull this out, and that will allow you to unlock and fold the bike, which we'll go over a little bit later. As we work our way up the frame of the body, you'll notice this is actually really thin, and that's one of the things that concerned me when I was first looking at it. I was like, wow, that's almost nothing, but this is actually really solid feeling, so uh, we'll see how it works out, but um, you know, I don't think there'll be any issues with this. Uh, here, we've got some bolts. Uh, that you can use to uh, mount a water bottle. So if you wanna do that, great place to do it as we work our way forward. Of course, we have our front fender assembly, um, which I uh, got attached here when we were assembling the bike. Uh, and this bike does have a front suspension, so that's always nice. It looks like here we've got, uh, you know, you can open and close it, so you can lock out as well as preload there. So very nice touch. Um, of course, these are the 20 by three tires, and this is that headlight, so we'll turn the bike on here in a moment, we'll be able to see that. Uh, you've got some additional mounting options for that front back which I am not going to be using, uh, but if you want to use it, you can absolutely mount it onto here. Now you've got more uh, places to store things on your ride. Now, as we work our way up, this is the collapsible handlebar stem, so really nice touch. And of course, the adjustable uh, handlebar height, which is really nice for riders of varying heights. So you can adjust it to whatever is comfortable for you. All right, working our way into the handlebar area, uh, this bike does have ergonomic grips. Uh, they are not locking grips, unfortunately, so they can uh, move around. So it'd be nice to see locking grips in the future. Uh, you do have a quarter twist throttle here. So if you want to use the throttle, that's where it's located. This, of course, is our Shimano 7 speed shifter, pretty standard on e-bikes in this price range. Now here we do have the LCD display for this bike and then the control panel. If we hit the power button here, that'll turn the LCD screen on. And on the control panel, you've got plus and minus buttons. That controls your level of pedal assist. So as you hit plus, you can go one, two, three, four, five. Five being the highest level of motor assistance. And then you can hit the minus button to go back down and pedal assistance all the way to zero, which is no assistance at all whatsoever. Uh, you do have a, a button here to turn on the headlight. There's the headlight 
course, we'll do night rides to fully test that out. Uh, you've also got a mode button here, which will allow you to you know, toggle between trip, the odometer, uh, as well as average speed and all that fun stuff. Uh, if you click it again, it'll take you right back to trip. Uh, the bike does have uh, the ability to go into an advanced menu uh, system. You can hit the plus and minus button simultaneously, and that will take you into the advanced settings, uh, which of course we'll be covering in another video. As we work our way to the left, you do have a bell. Um, so it is a manual bell, which is always nice to have because I feel like that's the least startling thing, um, you know, in terms of getting people's attention. And then as we work our way to the left, we've got our left uh, handbrake. All right, so now I've got the bike turned around, and as you can see, we've got our 180 millimeter rotors, and those are 180 millimeters both in the front and the rear, and then of course, our manual brakes. Uh, as we work our way over uh, to this side of the bike, uh, you will see the rear uh, 180 millimeter rotors as well as the braking mechanism there. And of course, this is that key that I was talking about. Um, this you know, allows you, as you can see, you can, uh, unlock this and remove the battery if you want and then if you lock it you'll see that little uh, pin come out and lock it into place. Now if you're curious the charging times on this bike it does come with a 2 amp charger so with this being 13 amp hours you're looking at about six and a half hour charge time from zero to 100 percent. Now I did say I was going to show you the tail light so here is a tail light and here's what it looks like when you hit the brakes. Uh, and, you know, nice little touch. Not all e-bikes have uh, blinking uh, brake lights. A lot of them, it's just a tail light. So if you hit the brakes, nothing happens. So it's nice to see an actual brake light on this bike. And lastly, we've got our cadence sensor here. This is a cadence sensor e-bike. And so motor output in those pedal assist levels is dependent on how fast you pedal. So the faster you pedal, the more power you're going to get uh, to the rear wheel. If you're curious what the kickstand looks like, here it is. This thing is really robust. Um, definitely more intense than other kickstands I've seen. Uh, so of course we'll put that to the test over time, but so far feels super solid. Now, if you're curious how fast this bike can go out of the box, uh, it'll go 20 miles an hour using throttle only. And if you wanna you know, do some you know, fast pedaling, you can get this bike up to 28 miles an hour. So that is available to you. Me personally, I like cruising around 18, 20 miles an hour, but if you want that extra speed, you can absolutely tap into it. All right, so now that we've got the Engway L20 2.0 out of the box, we've got it fully assembled, we went over all the features, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing charged up and we're gonna take it on its first ride, so let's go. All right, so here we are on our first ride on the Engway L20 2.0. Uh, we are cruising around in pedal assist number three here, and we are at uh, going about 15 miles an hour right now, and we're gonna go on our first little venture off the beaten path and see how well the uh, suspension does on this bike. And it seems to be uh, handling the dirt road no problem at all whatsoever. You know, as I mentioned before, this bike does have a dual fork front suspension as well as a suspension seat post. Uh, so no dedicated rear suspension on this bike. Uh, very similar to some other uh, folding e-bikes that I've tested. All right. Here we go into some gravel. And those fat tires handle it perfectly. So, uh, you know, pedal assist level three. You know, I'm able to comfortably pedal in a gear seven at 15 miles an hour. Now, if I bump this up uh, to four, I'll tell you right now, this 750 watt motor uh, kicks in really strong so yeah you have to watch out for that because I think with this you could almost do a wheelie if you're not paying attention so right now uh, paddling gear assist four we are at 21 miles an hour cruising along and of course if we go into paddle assist five we can get going heck of a lot quicker so right now 27 28 28 all right so uh 28 uh in pedal assist five you know that takes you really clearly into class three e-bike mode uh so i will dial it down here 
uh, and we'll do a throttle test here in a moment. We'll actually use the Draggy performance monitor to get some uh, acceleration stats on this bike. All right, so now we're going to use the Draggy performance monitor, which is basically a, you know, advanced GPS unit on top of my helmet right now. And we're going to test out the acceleration on this bike, uh, both in pedal assist five, as well as throttle only. Uh, so we'll see how quick we can get going. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And we are going to go. All right, and three, two, one, go. So the LCD said we hit almost 29 miles an hour. Let's see what the draggy says. 27 miles an hour in 16.68 seconds. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing, throttle only in three, two, one, go. And as usual, in class two mode, the bike tops out at about 20 miles an hour throttle only. If you want to go faster than that, you'll have to pedal. But we'll see uh, how we did stat-wise on the draggy. There we go, 20 miles an hour and 9.94 seconds. So there you go, this is a pretty quick bike. Of course, it's got that 750 watt motor that peaks at 1125 watts. Um, you know, when you're just pedaling along and pedal assist, let's say two, and then all of a sudden you bump it up to three, uh, it is a strong activation of that motor. So you want to be ready for that uh, because it is, you know, a lot of power for being a 68 pound bike. Uh, so what we're going to do now is give these manual brakes a test. Uh, so right now we're going about 20 miles an hour and we're going to brake in three, two, one, brake. Okay, solid braking performance, no issues. Uh, really, you know, just locked up the tires at the last bit there, but you know, that's about it. So uh, pretty decent brake performance out of these manual brakes. Now, you know, depending on the bike that you look at, some bikes up there have manual brakes, some bikes have hydraulic brakes. Uh, hydraulic brakes are gonna obviously be the, you know, preferable option uh, if available. Uh, because they do require uh, less force to actuate those brakes. Uh, you know, the downside is that there could potentially be more maintenance in terms of, you know, switching out uh, brake fluid and uh, bleeding your brakes and all that fun stuff. So, all right, we are in that pedal assist five. And listen, you know, I'm just moving my legs right now. I'm not doing any work except ghost pedaling and we're able to go 27 or so miles an hour. So that is typical of a cadence sensor bike. It, you know, the power delivery is not dependent on how hard you're pedaling, but the actual movement of the pedals. And, you know, you pedal fast, you're gonna get more power output. And as long as those pedals are moving and you could be ghost pedaling, uh, you will get that power delivery. All right, let's see how we do uh, on some gravel. I'll go into pedal assist three. And we will cruise along, see how it does off the beaten path. And of course, this bike does have those 20 inch by three inch fat tires. Uh, so that's gonna help you, you know, with you know, dirt paths, uh, you know, some light gravel, things like that will handle much better uh, than non-fat tire bikes. So definitely very grippy, uh, not uh, worried about anything riding on this. Uh, solid grip to the ground. Now, one thing I did notice with this bike is there is a little bit of a delay uh, when you start pedaling and when the actual motor kicks in. Of course, that is typical of all cadence uh, sensor bikes, so I am not pedaling. I am just coasting right now, and I'll start pedaling, and there is the motor kicking. So there's a little bit of a delay, so keep that in mind. Um, if you are going to be starting from a stop, so let's just do that now. If you're gonna be starting from a stop uh, and you need to start pedaling, 
uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of work to get going. Um, so you want to make sure, of course, if you're going to do it that way, that you are in the right gear. So let me uh, switch back down to gear one. And we are at a stop. Uh, and let's say, you know, light turns green. It's my turn to go. I start pedaling, you know, so you do have to pedal a little bit to get it to go, but it does go. Um, so, you know, my recommendation is that anytime you're crossing an intersection or anything like that, my preference, just use the throttle. That'll get you going uh, really quickly. You don't have to worry about pedaling or being in the wrong gear. And then after you cross the intersection, you can go fiddle around with your gears, make sure uh, you're in the right position. And one thing I'll say is this LCD screen is very easy to see during the day. I'm not having any issues at all whatsoever. Um, really bright. Uh, so we'll definitely test it out, uh, you know, later on in darker conditions. We'll probably, you know, save that for another video. But I don't think this is going to have any issues of being, you know, too bright at night. It looks basically perfect to me. All right, so we're going about 15 miles an hour. We're gonna see what the braking performance looks like on dirt in three, two, one, go. Solid, you know, really good braking performance. Happy with that. One thing I will mention is that a lot of e-bikes under a uh, thousand bucks uh, will typically have, uh, you know, disc brakes, of course, uh, but the rotors are usually 140 to 160 millimeters. The rotors on the end way are actually 180 millimeters, which means you're gonna have a little bit more stopping power. So yes, this bike does have manual uh, brakes, uh, but I think it makes up for it with some of the larger uh, rotor surface area. So um, just wanted to point that out. All right, we will get going to 20 miles an hour and we will give uh, the brakes a uh, good old test again. So here we are 20 miles an hour and we will test the brakes in three, two, one, go. Yeah, very good braking power. Uh, pretty impressed that, uh, you know, the manual brakes are able to stop this thing as quickly as they do. Pedal Assist 4, if you're curious, takes us to about 20, 21 miles an hour, you know, comfortably pedaling. And as soon as you go into Pedal Assist 5, that unlocks you uh, to 28 miles an hour. I will say overall, it is a very nimble bike, very comfortable ride, very maneuverable. Uh, so, you know, that's the, one of the benefits of these bikes with 20 inch tires, uh, is they are easier to throw around compared to bikes with, let's say, 24 to 26 uh, inch tires. All right, we will take another ride on the gravel here, hop back onto the pavement. No problem. And we'll continue that here and head on back uh, to the neighborhoods here. All right, so, so far it's a very comfortable ride. I will say that uh, the seat is definitely not killing me. Uh, I would say it is uh, pretty comfortable actually. So lots of cushion in there. It is a suspension seat with a suspension seat post. So I think the combination of those three things make for a you know really comfortable ride. Uh, let's see here. We've been riding around, you know, eight miles at this point. Uh, there's no timer uh, on here to tell you how long you've been riding. I mean, that would have been a nice thing to have, but uh, you know, anyways, uh, 8.1 miles and uh, yeah, it's comfortable. I can actually keep riding. I can go another eight, 10, 15 miles, I think in this seat. Uh, we'll definitely know tomorrow because tomorrow I'll be putting this bike through a range test. So we're gonna actually see how far we can go uh, on a single battery pedaling around, uh, you know, pedal assist three. And I think next weekend uh, we'll do a test uh, with throttle only uh, to see how far we can go with that. Cause I know that's something that some folks are interested in, so. All right, so here we are just pedaling along in pedal assist level five. And we are cruising around at about 25 miles an hour. So very comfortable ride. Stop at the stop sign and here we go. This is a perfect example of a time where I would use the throttle to get going and then I can get back to pedaling. So, you know, if you like to ride at 
you know, 20 plus miles an hour. I mean, if that's, you know, your groove, then hey, this bike has no problem doing it. You know, it can easily coast around here at, you know, comfortable 24, 25. And if you want to push it, you can definitely get it up to, you know, 27, 28 miles an hour. For me, I like to uh, cruise around around 15 to 18 miles an hour. Now, if you're curious what the folding mechanism on this bike looks like, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you simply unlock the stem. The stem folds down nicely. Uh, you can also, you know, fold the pedals in. And then, of course, here on this side of the bike, you've got uh, the other uh, locking mechanism. You just unlock that, and then you can fold the bike. Uh, so, um, folding is... Uh, pretty straightforward just remember to pull that kickstand in uh, because there is a um, kind of a mounting point or stand at the bottom of the frame uh, that keeps it standing up when it's in a folded state and then you can pick up this bike and uh, lift it into the back of your car you know it is of course 68 plus pounds so keep that in mind when you're lifting it you can put this in like a you know 40 50 gallon container um you know and throw it in the trunk of your car or you can throw it in as is anyways that's what the bike looks like in its folding state super compact all right so there you have it that is the first ride on this l20 2.0 e-bike from Engway. and uh, i'll tell you what so far in terms of first impressions uh, i'm definitely impressed with this bike it's got you know plenty of power really good braking given you know it's got uh, manual disc brakes uh, and overall is a you know relatively smooth ride even off the beaten path so so far really happy um, and as I always do I'll be taking this through a full range test as well as a full hill climb test uh, we'll go through some of the menu settings as well as some other things and we'll culminate all of this in a full end to end review so if you aren't subscribed already consider uh, subscribing to this channel because I will be posting those updates as well as reviews on other e-bikes and electric scooters so if you have any questions comments concerns let me know in the comments section below and uh, if this is a bike that you're interested in purchasing I will include some links as well as coupon codes in the description below using those links help support this channel and they keep the wheels turning on future reviews and as always Thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We will see you next time.